Hello guys, welcome to the next episode of Banter Blitz. Uh, it is the very first show after a long break. I mean, in my own case, uh, because I was on vacation. And uh, as far as I understand, here is already a technical issue. Uh, so on chat, the guys are saying that it's impossible to challenge me. Well, uh, let's try to figure it out. Uh, first of all, a few things uh, that uh, were changed. Uh, no more late Friday night banter bleeds. So from now on, my show will uh, be on Thursday, normally at 8 p.m. Uh, Europe time. And uh, today we're going live a bit earlier because of uh, the great event. I'm not even... Uh, going to tell you which one. Uh, so I guess from from starting from the next week, it will be uh, the normal time, 8 p.m. Central Europe time. Uh, and now let's try to understand what is going on with the challenges story. So is it uh, just impossible to challenge me from uh, the show window? I mean, um, in show notes, there is my uh, nickname, uh, and as far as I understand, it's impossible to challenge me from there. But uh, just to help me understand, is it possible to go to my account page and to challenge me from there? So just try it. Um, if there will be no such a possibility for you, I will probably just uh, try to challenge you manually. For example, I can go to uh, the account page of graph von Palin. Let me just um, try to do that and challenge from there. So I can see the first challenge came, but from uh, non-premium user. So I'll try to go to graph von Palin, for example. So graph von Palin. All right, so I'm searching for this account. I'm here. So I'm going to the account page. And I'm just uh, challenging from here. So five minute, for example, and um, challenge, let's say. Please make sure the starting position is valid. Wow. That is what is it all about. So go to advanced settings. Starting position is valid. Um, for example, from here, five, five. Okay, everything looks fine. So challenge from here. Please make sure the starting position is valid. Wow, it doesn't really work. That's what you mean. All right, that is really <sighs> something. I mean, so as far as I understand, uh, okay, here is the comment from Shelly Ford. Challenges won't work from either side and I accepted the few non-premium challenges that actually went through. So probably the problem is with premium users, which is basically very strange. Very strange. I mean, it doesn't doesn't make any sense. Uh, but okay, uh, so let's try to take this first challenge at least. It's a non-premium challenge, but uh, if Anna did this yesterday, so probably I can do this as well. <laughs> at least I don't understand what's going on. All right, so I'll accept this challenge. Let's see how it works. So at least the board window works, right? Right, okay, so let's play again. And then we will see what to do with this. Maybe I will just uh, do, you know, general challenges with five minute games. Maybe I will be paired with some of you guys. I don't know how to deal with this. I was not aware of this problem. So as I said before, it's just the first day for me of streaming after a long break. I was far away. 
I was in Ukraine. <laughs> and uh, I didn't do chess at all during that time. Okay, castling, castling. So what's going on here? We have this very famous line, okay, bishop to g4, sort of tactical thing. Queen d4. Maybe I'm lost already, but I don't think so. So queen takes c3. My rook is hanging. I have pair of bishops, but at the same time, the pawn structure is completely symmetrical. What is better here, to play rook to b1 or to play bishop to g5? I think both are valid options, but which one is better? I don't know. Let's put the bishop on g5. I think it's a good square for this guy. So, without the possibility for premium users to challenge me, well, the whole concept of the show loses its meaning. That is something really bad, I must admit. All right. So, here is a comment. So, I became a premium user to play Banter Blitz, but now only non premium users can do it. Well, it really sounds and looks weird, but I guess it's something really bad in the sense of, you know, technical story. Uh, maybe there was an update or something like that that uh, affected some features. Most likely it is the case. Um, unfortunately, I'm not a tech guy here on Chess24, so I cannot really tell you what, what actually happened and how to solve it. And how long uh, can it potentially take to solve it? I don't know. It's really strange to me as well. And of course, I'm sorry for it. So, what's going on on the board? Position is really strange. I mean, my bishop is not necessarily that useful. Um, I have slightly better pawn structure maybe because of these doubled pawns, but I cannot really... Uh, make use of it. So, I guess this position should be more or less balanced. I will try to limit the two to that knight somehow. But first, I have to understand what to do with this pawn c2 with the threat of rook to e2. Is it really a threat to start with? Um, maybe it's not necessarily that dangerous, but anyway, a bit annoying. So, what if I just play something like rook to e1 here? Yeah, folks, riddle, exactly. So, when you try to challenge from uh, the account page, there is a problem with the uh, initial position. It says that check that the initial position is valid. Of course, it's valid. That's strange, really strange. And another comment, if you challenge, you have to hope that castling is possible. Really? <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's really strange. Okay, so let's take there. I have a feeling that there will be a big problem with the back rank now. I'm not really focused on the game. I'm really trying to understand what to do with the issue. So another challenge and... Um, from Fuchs Riddle. So somehow you managed to do that. Without castle it works. Oh my god. So we will check if this affects the really ability of castling there because everything can be possible. I mean, maybe you uncheck the possibility of castling, but who knows, maybe it will work anyway, somehow. All right, first of all, what to do with this? Position, I don't know. Position is really bad now for me. So let's put the rook on e7. To prevent at least immediate 
activation of black species. So the next game will be definitely against Fuchs Riddle. We'll see how it works without Castling. <laughs> That's interesting. All right, a5. So what about rook to d1? The idea of rook to d7. Does it make sense? Does it make any sense? I guess it does because I can basically stop that pawn if I want using the a file. Of course, I cannot take this pawn because of queen h4. King to g1, queen e1, king h2, and queen e5, winning my rook. So first I have to put my rook there. And now, what to do now? That's the question. So there is this red of check and then a1, right? So probably I have to play what? I have to play this king h2. Yeah. I guess it's still playable for white if I didn't miss anything. Probably I did. For now, it looks playable. So if queen goes to b2, let's say I can play queen to a3. I stop the pawn, I attack it, so everything is more or less protected. If black does not do anything active here, maybe I can play even king to h3, protect in h4, and then move my queen to a3 or something. Uh, in this case, I wanted to play this anyway. Queen here, all right, so what about this move? Like, everything is more or less under control, or is it? G4. I have a feeling it's a wrong move, because I weaken my king's position a lot. Uh, but, all right. Maybe I'm fine still. Oh, that was very bad. That was very bad idea, obviously. Because now rookie two is possible. Nah, that was that was strange decision of mine. Now I'm just lost, right? So King G2 was a bad move. Very, very bad. Mm, I don't see any other square anyway. But it's lost. Just Queen B2 and it's time to resign. All right. So. Queen E1 now, right? Yeah. Yes. So. Let's try this no castling thing. So folks wrote all right, except let's see if it is possible to castle. Although we have this function switched off. That's really interesting. So let's play normal chess for now and see if castling is possible. <laughs> if it is not, this will definitely affect the way we play. So maybe the normal theory is no longer applied. <laughs> uh, all right, e3, so say queen to b6. Or maybe it's a good idea just to try to exchange queens as fast as possible. In that case, castling is probably no longer needed that much. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of strategy. But first we have to understand if it is uh, possible in principle. <laughs> Mick Karras. All right, so there is another interesting possibility just to register a free account for this very episode, right? <laughs> and to challenge me. Um, and uh, I can recognize some premium users almost immediately. 
For example, make carries is clearly make tell. But non premiums now know this trick and they can use it as well. <laughs> All right. So, White has to develop the light script bishop to check if castling is possible. But White doesn't do that. All right, so let put the, let's put the bishop on e7. Now I'm ready to castle. I'm going to try it next move. F4. All right. Yeah, I can do that. But maybe white cannot do this. I don't know. Black can castle. That's a good thing. All right. B3. Now I can take on d4. Basically, my rook on c8 is protected now. And this means I can even take on d4. But then bishop f2 is possible, right? Bishop f2, and then what? And then it's unclear. But then I have, you know, bishop c5, c takes d4, bishop takes d4. Looks interesting, so I'm going to try that. So knight takes d4 using the fact that c3 pawn is pinned. And now bishop d4. Attacking the queen, attacking the bishop, attacking the rook, attacking literally everything. So here, of course. I'm going to take this guy because the next move will be queen e3 checkmate, I believe. Okay. So, nice stuff. I mean, at some point, white started playing too aggressively, I believe. So, queen c1 was okay. Uh, 95 is already something... I would try to avoid it. It's too early, I guess, for this activity. And this move doesn't really accomplish anything. So I would have played some like bishop e2 preparing castling. Of course, if castling is possible. Um, another idea is to try knight to h4 at this point. Uh, just to take my bishop. Because I didn't do everything to save it. So probably h6 deserved serious attention to make this h7 possible for bishop to occupy. So... Here, I believe some like knight to h4 looks very logical. Because without this light squared bishop, black will not have this great pressure on white's position anymore. Queen will feel much more comfortable after that. Just imagine there is no bishop here on this diagonal. It's possible to put the queen on c2 or maybe even b1 if there is a shred along the c file. So knight to e5 is anyway normal move. I mean, it's not a mistake whatsoever. But the next play is too much, I think. So g4... Okay, it's probably possible to play like this, but at some point it was necessary to deal uh, with that bishop f1 because without developing that guy, it's really hard to accomplish anything anyway. So f4 was probably okay here at castle. Mm, and g5 deserved some attention here for sure because um, when that is attacking, there is a threat of knight to d7. I believe there is anyway nothing really. Uh, dangerous for black, so I can take on g5, f takes g5, and put my knight, say, on e4. Tempo move attacking the bishop, or maybe h5 with a similar idea, just to attack the bishop. So, the point is, there is a possibility to play knight to d7, but then after queen to d8, attacking the knight. If knight takes the rook, I can take on g3. On the other hand, after knight takes here, there is my bishop, which is under pressure. So, hard to calculate everything precisely. So knight takes here, say if knight takes h7, I take that rook, in which case we have equal quantity of pieces on the board uh, for some time, but that knight on h7 is definitely um, much worse than mine on h1, I believe. If rook goes to g1 here, I can take on f1, I guess. 
Yeah, I take here, say if knight on f1 is captured, I take the knight on f8. If knight takes here, then probably I just take on d2. Turn in sort of knight f3, and then I can take that knight. So position is unclear, but I think even if I lose the exchange at some point, I will have a good compensation because white's pawn structure is compromised. I don't know. It was too much. But b3 is definitely a wrong move. So now I just take on d4, and white definitely loses material. If knight takes c6, I just take on c6 with the queen, and then I win a pawn at least. Uh, if this happens, then, well, it's really hard for white now, because if there is b4 or something, I have just knight c2 or knight f3 again with the idea of capturing that bishop, so I think something like this is also very, very unpleasant. Oh, sorry, it's even impossible to take the knight because my bishop controls that square. Yeah, knight c2 then wins immediately. So, there is simply no time for it, okay? Yeah, bad position. Cd4 happened, then bishop d4, queen goes away, just takes here. If bishop takes d4, nothing really changes in the sense of the evaluation of the position, because I just take here first with check, and then take on d4. I have amazing advantage, uh, extra queen, and, well, white is not developed yet. Um, okay. Let's continue. Let's continue. The next uh, one is Graf von Palin, except. So we know now that a castling is possible. This is a very good thing. We don't have to, you know, invent something new. So let's just play chess. D6. Okay. D4. G6 now. What if I just limit the activity of that bishop first, then play c4? I'll have a transposition to one of the lines from King's Indian, I believe. Uh, at least there is a possibility to have a transposition to King's Indian. If black wants, I believe. Queen c7 preparing e5 is uh, something more in the style of hurts so I guess e5 is the idea here for black I can prevent it by playing bishop f4 by the way because I've already played h3 so my bishop can retreat to h2 in case of knight to h5 is it a good position for my bishop I'm not sure because after knight h5 bishop h2 black can anyway play e5 in which case However, I can try g4, but then knight goes to f4. No, I don't think that bishop will be good on h2 after that. On the other hand, there is an interesting line, bishop f4, knight h5, bishop h2, <clears throat> something like e5, then c5, which is damaging uh, this great situation in the center for black. Uh, do you know. I'm tempted to try it. So let's put the bishop on f4. Knight to d7, and now I wanted to do what? Just to retreat. With the bishop in advance, because c5 with the temple is something not very convenient for white. And now if black plays e5, I can really consider this c5 move. Just attacking d6. If dc5, I grab the central pawn, which will be, give me a great initiative, I believe. And uh, if e takes d4 in that case, then d6 is hanging. So I'm attacking it twice with the pawn and bishop on h2. All right, queen goes to b6, attacking b2. And e5 is no longer possible because I can take it twice. So probably I can simply protect, can simply protect what? b2 pawn with the help of this move. Queen to c2. Probably uh, preparing castling long. But I'm not sure if it is possible. Still not convinced entirely. Maybe I can achieve something just playing e5 here. Let's try e5. This looks very tempting. I mean, if cd4, I can take on f6, attacking the bishop. And if that goes away, there is always this knight d5, which looks very good for me. Then queen goes to a5 with check. I have b4. 
c takes b4 i have great center but do i have something more than that not sure um e takes d6 is also a valid option i believe to start with And now knight d5, right? Yeah, this looks great. This looks amazing, I would say. So queen is under attack. Now, after this move, I wanted to try b4. Just attacking everything. Like, d6 is still hanging, that's the point. And I have a check along the e-file, which should be very, very annoying. C takes b4, now check, right? Where the king goes after that? I don't know. Now let's give a check from here. Maybe e2 is better, but I have more space for my king in case of this b3. All right, now let's take there. And if b3, I have bishop b4 with the temple. That's what I wanted to try. Maybe it's wrong, but I don't think so. So if b2, I have rook b1. If queen a2, I have bishop b7, which finishes the game, I believe. And after queen a6, I do the same, right? Bishop b7, check. If knight e7, then queen e7, checkmate. If king e8, then knight c7, checkmate. Well, I didn't have to castle here at all <laughs> in this game. Nice one. You know, this additional factor, when you are not sure that castling is possible, forces you to search for... Uh, non-standard resources so you you want to you know solve the game without castling prior to castling at least so uh ceramic student is here um okay guys we found an interesting possibility uh to actually challenge so just follow the instructions from chat so you somehow switch off the possibility of castling and then uh, the challenge works. All right, so what happened in this game? I believe that Black uh, gave me a lot of chances by uh, simply delaying castling. So here, I believe instead of Queen C7, it was better to start with this move. Oh, it was not possible. It was not possible. So maybe castling is possible for me, but not for the challenger. Amazing. Let's have a look at the position after uh, this. So can I castle? Yes, I can. So that's the trick. That's the trick. So you cannot castle, in fact. If you challenge this way, you cannot castle. But I can. Now, it's a very unfair advantage for me. But then, okay, uh, if we know now that, uh, well, you cannot castle, and I can, I will just avoid castling in each and every game. So in this game, uh, although I had a possibility to castle, I decided not to do that. But what to do then if you cannot castle here? Well, then probably... No, it's hard. Then probably uh, the entire opening is not very uh, good, because I have very strong play in the center at any point of time, at any moment I want to start pushing my pawns, I can do that. So probably in this situation when you cannot castle, in fact, uh, you have to avoid uh, situations in which your opponent has a lot of, you know, uh, just much more space, that's what I mean. Probably. I'm still not sure, but yeah, it's probably to fight uh, it's probably much better to fight for the center uh, and try to hold it. But yeah, anyway, at some point, even if position is open, you have to castle at some point. But if white cannot castle, for example, it's not very critical then, perhaps. Do not. It's very interesting. So queen c7, bishop f4, castling is not possible because of the settings of the challenge. It's so knight d7, bishop h2, now queen b6. Yeah, now it's really hard because I want to play e5, and if you play e5 yourself, then I play c5. It's really hard now. Because I want to take on d6 and take on e5. If you take on d4, I take on d6 first, and then take on d4. 
Um, if you take on c5 and just take on e5 this way, fortunately the knight away, and then next move is e6. So e5 is not possible. Yeah, so queen c7 was, was very bad. Maybe it was interesting. Taking into account that casting is not possible just to play knight f6 to d7. Looks super ugly. But in this case, at least you prevent e5 and want to play e5 yourself. And this knight can go through a6 to c7. Very passive, but probably it was just needed. Because after this, my goodness, I can play e5 at some point. And it starts looking very bad, right? So now just takes, takes, knight e5. Yeah, it's, it's probably lost already. Um, so let's have a look at challenges now. Uh, namesake, yes, this challenge is here. MGTOW's challenge is also here. But all games are unrated. <laughs> all right, I think uh, it's better that, uh, than not having a game at all, I suppose. I don't know. Uh, the Clasher. Is the next. Let's play. So no castling now. What to do? Let's play knight f3 anyway. C4. It makes no sense, I mean. All this theory now, the typical theory, makes no sense. It's not that dramatic if compared to uh, Fisher Random, but still, having no possibility to castle, it's really painful. So, how not to castle? We have to keep position closed. means, you know, to control the situation in the center at the same time, to prevent the opening of the position. Otherwise, the side which has more space and more active pieces will benefit enormously from it, just like I did in the previous game, all right? Not bd7, but should b2. Okay, e5 is ready. As far as I remember, knight c3 should be not a bad option here. I mean, the point of that, after e5, I will just take on d5, then play knight to b5, which may be not very uh, pleasant for black. I mean, cd5, cd5, knight b5, attacking the bishop, bishop goes away, I play rook to c1, then knight c7, next move. And I grab the bishop at least. For the knight. Romney student says I challenged with white and black keen on d8 and Castlin disabled. Wow. This will be interesting. My goodness. What a crazy show today. So now it goes to c5. What's the point? That is going to e4 or what? Maybe b4 now. Then that goes to e4, in fact. Um, what about g4, g5 idea? So I don't mind playing something like rook to g1. I anyway have to make use of this rook somehow at some point. Um, B4. It's really tempting, but then I guess to E4, so what's the point? Maybe just D3 controlling this. Let's try it. Just a modest pull move controlling E4, um, making this knight on C5 not that, you know, useful or something like that. B6. Okay. 
So now b4 forces the knight back to d7, then maybe b5 immediately after. c5. I don't think I get anything. Maybe e4 now instead, with the idea of e5. What about this? Looks a bit strange. Oh, playing without castling is also very strange. So, who cares? So, we want to play e5 next move. And if d takes e4, then d takes e4, and my rook a1 gets the possibility to get to d1. Open file for the rook. Now I think makes <clears throat> even more sense to try to occupy open files. d4, what's this? What about knight takes d4? Isn't it possible just to grab the pawn? Arthur Navarovsky is here as well. Hello. Hello. Oh, bishop to b7. So now I'm a pawn up for nothing, I think. So let's go back. Now I want to play e5 at the same time. I want to play d4. Two strategic, one tactical and one strategic threat. Now, Black's position looks not so great anymore. At least some extra material, right? I believe e5 was the last chance, because now should be just, just very bad. First, extra material, extra pawn. Second, I start grabbing space. It should be very annoying for black. Here we go. All right, we are very close. So now he's going to occupy a four, the only square. Can we trap that guy by playing queen e4 now? Super greedy attempt. Just creating a threat of g4. Is there a good defense after that? I'm not so sure. At the same time, I don't want to spend the time, <laughs> uh, spend a valuable move for this sort of, you know, one move threat. Maybe just g3, bishop g2. Trying to complete the development. And if c6, c5, then d4, d5, grabbing even more space. Yeah, let's play g3. Or just play g6, all right, bishop g2. Clean f8. Trying to perform this manual castling, right? I guess it's time to improve this bishop. It no longer belongs to b2 square, I think. At the same time, I create a thread of g4 or something. No, it was not very important thing. But occupying this square looks quite good. Okay, now, what to do? Knight e4 or rook to d1? Let's play rook to d1 first. Just getting ready for anything connected with f takes e5, let's say. In that case, I just take on e5 with the pawn and my rook is active there. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. 
just to take here and my rook starts exerting some really annoying I want to believe really annoying pressure now what I would have castled here <laughs> it's impossible though So let's protect the pawn somehow. Should I protect it? I can also just play king to f1 now. And if knight takes c5, there's bishop to f4, I guess. Yeah. Let's protect the pawn this way. Like, pinning the knight now looks decisive. And here's my queen on c7. Okay, so I have a feeling that it was okay after e4 just to take and to play e5, preparing knight to e6, absolutely playable position. I guess black <coughs> can be even slightly better here, potentially, but of course, it's really hard to tell. Because we cannot castle. <laughs> Stupid thing. But alright. So at least you fight for some squares. You prevent me from grabbing the space. And you control now d4 and f4. Your knight from c5 can go to e6. Very logical. I uh, think maybe you can start with bishop g4. Then take it on f3. And then knight e6, knight d4. So something typical for this sort of pawn structure. Without castling. But what? Also doesn't have such a possibility. So I think that was a good thing. Uh, because d4, well, I just take... My d3 is protected, so something like bishop somewhere attacking my knight. I just go away with my knight. And I'm fine. So just just, just extra pawn. With no compensation. Uh, let's go further. Um, next one is namesake. Except... Am I going to play all the games with white pieces? What's wrong with this? C4. Aha. Uh -huh. Something really strange now. Okay, let's keep on playing this way. Can I just play c5 here? I mean, looks a bit strange, but I separate d7 and e5 pawns with the idea of just attacking this e5. Now what? Knight to a3 with the idea of knight to c4 at some point. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, let's try it. Knight to a3, potentially, to c4. All right, so now after e4, I have a choice. Uh, knight to g5 probably makes no sense because of h6, and even if I take on f6 after queen f6, my rook on a1 is hanging. So even if I take on e4 with the queen, king goes away, my knight is hanging, and my rook is hanging. So then I have to go to the center, I believe. So knight d4 with the idea of knight f5, attacking the queen and attacking g7. It's getting interesting. Okay, d5, I think I have to take. Otherwise, black will have a great center. And after bishop d6, can I play knight b5? I think it doesn't make sense. Bishop goes to e5 simply. But then bishop a3, queen goes back to d8 again. I have nothing, I think. So let's go to c4. 
typical square. And goes to e3 now. <laughs> Still trying to occupy f5, that's my point here. A strange position. Andre, have you played the World Juniors? What's that? That was a question from Kramnik student. All right, that goes here. Maybe now I have some <clears throat> great chances. So let's say knight e3 goes to f5, forces the queen to f8. And then I have knight c6, b6, queen c6, attacking that rook and the bishop on c7. This looks very promising. Let's go there. World Junior Chess Championship. No, I played only European one in 2003. And it was terrible. I mean, result was terrible. But I was rated 2070 points after all, so I was quite bad. In the same tournament, by the way, there were several guys playing. You know, each and everybody. Uh, there was Yanni Pomnishi, Dmitry Andrejkin, and guess who? Magnus Carlsen. And Magnus won that tournament. King goes to d8. I played only against Andrejkin from this three famous players. And I lost. Probably more or less equal rook ending. Ha! Huh. Okay, now what? Rook to c1 looks looks good. So if you want, you can check in the database. 2003 European Chess Championship or Youth Championship. Budva. Under 14, it was. No, there were not 2600s. So Magnus was like 2400s or around 2400s. Uh, and Draken was 2400s. And Nipomnishi was 2400s plus, so almost 2500s. So all three were like strong international masters. Knight to b6. Queen takes a7, right? Well, let's take there. Oh, I blundered my knight. But here is this thing. Insane position. Knight takes c7, queen takes b6. I have like what? Like three extra pawns. <laughs> Pair of bishops. But my keen on e1 is probably not better than that keen on d8. Well, probably a bit better because uh, my opponent doesn't create any threat to my keen, whereas my pieces are ready to, to attack. Cobra says I cannot challenge. Uh, basically, you can if you switch off the possibility of castling. We're playing without castlings this time. Oh. You can probably hear my son screaming at the background. Bishop there. Okay. 
Now it looks like I've started the game with a G4 move, right? Very typical position for that story. Oh, goodness. What am I doing here, huh? Rook takes h5. No, it goes to h6. Okay, queen d4 check. Then I will capture on e4, or maybe on g7. I don't know which one is better. Let's take on g7 because in that case we create a passer. Very strong one. Bishop f5. Um, I don't know what to do here. Come on, h6 takes. I'll probably lose this on time, all right? Sixteen seconds only. Really hard to play. Oops, checkmate. Well, whew, I was really lucky here. So somehow I managed to, you know, uh, to checkmate my opponent before I lost on time. Uh, yeah, but it was just a question of luck. I was quite fast, of course, at the end of the game, but it was just a, just a lucky one. Okay. So, really hard to command this, but I'm not sure that bishop d6 in general was a good idea here. I believe that, well, okay, bishop d6 was, was quite okay. Somewhere here, I think that it was interesting to try something like knight c6, or maybe even c5 fighting for the space. And then knight to c6, and then bishop goes away, and then d5 or something. But in this case, of course, I can play e4. Also, just closing the position completely. I don't know, but um, after this, I think I have a very clear plan of just attacking pawns here in the center. These guys are separated. Yeah, maybe e4 was too much. At the moment, I create no threats because I don't think I can play knight c4 because of queen takes c5. So maybe it was a good moment to try to undermine my c5 pawn, something like b6. If I take on b6, let's say a takes b6, attacking my knight already. And if my knight goes here, there is a good way to protect the pawn with the help of d6. Very solid position in the center, then b5 or something, and so forth. So, I believe black's position is good here. Also, maybe here it's possible to play e4, and after knight d4, something like d5. But in that case, we have something very similar to the game. Um... Some like knight to e3 now, attacking f5 square and c6, and so forth. So e4, yeah, it was too risky. But maybe it was not critical, like, probably d5 was too risky. But if you play g6, you weaken diagonal. Maybe it was not critical to weaken it. You know, intending to play bishop e5. But in this case, I can play, of course, this b4 move, and then maybe knight c4, and yeah, dark squares will be very weak. No, I don't like it. So yeah, maybe maybe e4. 
I guess b6 was good. Just uh, dealing with this most annoying pawn at the moment. Pawn c5. Okay. Um, because the rest was quite promising for white. I mean, um, probably here there was the last moment to deal with this f5 square somehow. Well, at least knight to d7 was not good. So knight to d7 was probably a decisive mistake. Because after that, I'm definitely much better, right? So I'm just winning the material and so forth. So knight to d7 was a critical thing. So maybe g6 here, but still risky. And I have some like g4 at any point and intending g5 or something. Starts looking annoying. All right. Okay, anyway, thanks for the game. It was quite interesting, quite exciting. All right, Kramnik student, he said that kings are on d8 and d1. Let's have a look at this. <laughs> That's right. It was not a joke. It was not a joke. All right, so. Okay. But I don't remember, was it about castling or not? Are castlings allowed here? Because I have no idea. Uh, Bishop to G7. We will try, all right? We will just try. Where is the most vulnerable point? C7 in this case. So let's try to be active. I don't think. It's bad to occupy the center. E6 is very strange to me. Uh, but all right, let's keep on developing pieces. This starts looking dubious. <laughs> but I cannot take on C7, unfortunately, because I have no follow-up there. So let's develop the knight. Mixal says no. No means no castling, right? Okay. So what's going on here? Let's activate the pieces. Too many dark squared weaknesses here, I believe. So if I take on c7, king c7, queen goes to f4, d6 simply, right? Right. What about d5 here? e d5, bishop c7, king c7, no follow-up there anyway. Okay, I think I have the time for maneuvering. <laughs> I have a lot of space. Uh, Black spent a lot of time on pawn moves, so why not to spend the time on castling manually like rook d1 king c1 and i have an overwhelming position i believe so too many pawn moves too much space for white should be winning somehow all right f5 it's a tricky thing because there is a threat of g5 seemingly okay so i'll just Prevent g5. Yeah, great episode. I mean, I love it. Maybe we should just switch to playing Fisher Random. It's really fun. <laughs> okay, can see one. Here we go. Black cannot do the same. Because I'm already much more active. So what about d5? Is it too much or is it just, just good enough? Knight to e5 looks also interesting. Look at this. Knight e5, d5, d5. Some sort of attack there. No. 
No. Probably that is too much. If I play e5 now, then b4. So like ed6, cd6, and d5 is possible. Wow. Have no idea, but I'm really tempted to try it. Maybe after b4. No, d5 is played. I expected something like b4. Like critical option. Fighting for d5 square. Now I, sh I should be just strategically winning, right? If there is a weakness on c5, I can play 91, 93. At some point, I will occupy that square. Yeah, let's go there. Let's just go there. I failed to open up a position in the center, but it's not a big deal, I guess. It's not that important anymore. All right, that goes here, but then I do what? I occupy c5. At some point, it will be very hard for black to breathe, even. At least I will do everything to, to force something like that. Now what? Knight on c3 is not very useful. Not doing anything specific. Let's start with the b3 control and c4, just preventing knight to c4. Now I have, I mean... something like knight e2 so my bishop no longer has to control c4 queen e7 oh my goodness my son is just screaming like crazy Feels like there should be something, but I don't have enough resources to accomplish what I want. Let's start with this move. Just attacking g6. Okay, I'm not against this exchange. Now I take here, it should be like very good exchange for me. E6 is handing, bishop on G7 is handing. There's a check on A3, of course. But then I can just go to d2 with a king i think i'm okay i can also just go to b1 i believe but there is something like knight to a4 after that not very pleasant created two threats to b2 and c3 yeah so i think i will go to d2 Now I have a shred of knight c6, in addition to knight e6 and queen to g7. I don't see a possibility for black to cover, like, everything, what's heading. So here I will play this. With a temple, after king d7 I take the rook with the temple as well. So now it's lost. All right, all right. I guess there was a problem with the general approach. Too many pawn moves. Like It's a typical thing when your king is on d8 and you have a possibility to run away at any point. But when your king is on d8 and there is no space, then it's potentially quite dangerous. So probably here e5 wasn't the best move. I don't know which one was. Uh, maybe even h5 and then sacrificing on g5 was also very, very tempting. d5 was tempting. Maybe I should have started with some sort of prophylaxis like king to b1 first, covering a2, just, uh, you know, maintaining this tension. So 
so e5, b4 was interesting. So here I wasn't sure what to do. I was like about to take here, cd6, and then to try something like this, preparing queen b6. So let's say bc3. Uh, by the way, here I have this very strong move. I didn't see this uh, during the game. The point is, if queen e6, then I take on d6 with the rook, winning the queen. If bishop e6, I can take on d6 with the rook again. And then bishop is hanging, so this forces black to come back with the bishop to d7, which is quite, quite strange. So let's see, bishop takes, rook takes, bishop goes here. Maybe I don't have anything specific after that, but position looks quite good for white. King there. Um, hard to say. Knight e5 looks very strong, as well as bishop e5. As well as queen to c7, preparing white, preparing bishop to c4. Attacking that queen. Do not. Looks, looks interesting. Maybe b3. It's better just covering a2 at the same time, and then bishop c4, and so forth. So, interesting. Maybe queen b6 immediately was better thing. So king is forced to e8. And now I have queen c7, but does it give me anything? I, I'm not sure. Yeah. It's a crazy position, but b4 deserves serious attention. I mean, after b4, uh, maybe white has something decisive immediately. I don't see it right now, at least. Uh, but in any case, uh, the game would have been much more interesting, I guess. Because after d5, everything is clear, so strategically, position is just very bad for black. It's hard to win because it is closed, but look at this bishop on c8. It's a typical thing for French defense, let's say. And the pawn structure resembles French, some lines of French, and other similar structures. So I have this very strong f4 square. Uh, if, for example, here queen goes back to f7, protecting g6, I can just do what? Put my bishop somewhere here, and then knight f4 starts looking very, very annoying. And gradually white should manage. I mean. All right, thank you. Uh, let's play our tour. Um, let's try something else. From the other side. So I got disconnected for some reason. I don't know why. Um, probably the stream is back now. Just let me know in chat. Um, Arthur, I want to ask you to challenge again. Because basically when the game was started, I got disconnected immediately. Now just challenge again, please. And uh, right now I'm going to play against uh, Credulous. So I'll accept that challenge. All right. Arthur has now an I am killer badge. Really? Nice.
Okay, so fighting for space, right? C4. E4. E6, queen c2, that's what I wanted to try here. Something really typical, but there is no castling, right? Mm, Black is preparing c5, seemingly. So maybe it's a good idea for me to close this a bit. but to open in the center. Because I have a pair of bishops, but you never know. You never know. Without castling, it can be anything. All right, so now the position starts getting crazy. Um, what to do? Rook to e1. I have a feeling that black can even try queen takes c5, so I have some discovered checks, but they don't look enough. They don't look good enough. Maybe bishop takes d4 first, anyway. Uh, I have no idea. Let's take. And then rook to e1. g7 is heading, by the way. King f8, rook to e1. Starts looking quite promising for white. So I have more space. I have a pair of bishops. More active pieces in general. I have a chance to play king g2 if necessary. And okay, just started the attack. Feels like potentially I will have better coordination. All right, bishop e5. Now I can go away with my bishop from e4. There will be peen, but is there really anything? I don't think so. What about just exerting additional pressure? It's also not that great. Let's just take it. And now what I wanted to try, bishop takes c6, bank wins c5. There is nothing, so let's protect the pawn first. We have four. Yeah, that's what I wanted to try. Now I have everything protected. I'm gonna play king to g2. Okay. Rook is activated three. There, but now... Well, the weaknesses are quite... Should be quite annoying for black to protect. But I have to play correctly. 
I'm playing not very good moves, I think. Yeah, simple as that. Um, well taken ish. Queen e6, knight goes to d6. And then what? Do I have anything there? So, like, queen d7 attacking c6. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I have something. Maybe just extra pawn. Will be extremely hard to prove anything there, but pawn is a pawn after all. Nah. Yeah. Should be a draw, right? Should be just a draw. All right, interesting game. So at some point I felt that I was better, but mm, it was not good enough. So probably I just play this too early, this before thing. Yeah, after that position became absolutely simple. And what I should have done here is, well, trying to actually keep this position which this knight is very passive to keep both the queen and the bishop on the board and so on that was my only chance so slow maneuvering or something like that but it's not you know my strongest side especially when it comes to bleeds uh, but somewhere here black was almost completely fine so after queen to d3 knight there and bishop to f3 i missed very strong move into g8 into g8 i think was the easiest way for black to solve all the problems. Because after king g2, that, the move I wanted to play, first of all, b4 is hanging, right? So b4 is possible to capture. I have to think about it. So probably I should have played something like a3, in which case after king h7, I think black can even grab the initiative because there is already a threat of rook e8, rook d8, like... Starting playing in the center quickly. I don't believe in this thing like h4 or something. It's just, you know, not even a threat or something. Rook d8 and rook e8 are much more relevant threats. And it doesn't feel like my bishop is doing anything. It's quite passive. Well, this knight can be potentially very good somewhere in d5, maybe. Maybe at some point it can be even maneuvered to g5 or something. So I don't believe white has. Um, anything to play for advantage what already has to think of uh, equalizing and it's not so simple because black pieces are all of a sudden very well coordinated so this king f king g8 king h7 i think it was very strong maneuver because after this well i had enough time to improve my position now i start feeling like i'm a bit better after rook e6, I'm definitely better, but this this better is not that big. <laughs> that that's the problem. Uh, yeah, maybe here I should have just captured on f7. I don't know why didn't I even consider such an option. Just exchanging queens, right? And then trying to like b5, bishop b7, but then knight blockades the pawn from c7. Okay, also not so simple, but it is something typical, right? It's a typical 
Endgame in which bishop should be potentially better than the knight. So maybe here some like king g3, h4 quickly. And then trying to... Uh, trying to... You know... To prove that my pawn structure is better. My pieces are better coordinated. I have more space after all this constant threat of playing b5 or something. Alright. So let's play one more game against Artur. Here is the challenge. So rematch. I lost one, but I will try to. I'll try to survive it. Finally, game with black pieces. E4. Uh, E5. Let's play open game. Let's see how... Whoa, 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 what's that? It was supposed to be at f4, I believe. That is strange. No, I, I believe that was like... A try to play f4. Now I have very strange threat of just taking the knight and then queen h4 check and queen takes h2. Something like this. <laughs> uh, strange position. Okay, oh. Come on. That was the whole point. <laughs> just to put the queen on f2. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Strange evening, strange games, strange technical problem with challenges. So that we were playing without castlings and so forth but anyway it was fun i guess it was not that bad for the very first show after a long break uh i hope even though we played this very strange version of chess you learned something uh because after all it is my main goal to make you learn something new uh once again starting from uh this week uh, i will go live with the banter bleeds so uh, well um Normally on Thursdays, uh, 8 p.m. Central European time. All right. Uh, see you around, guys. See you around. Uh, wish you all the best and enjoy uh, the next day of the greatest event ever, I would say. So, um, most likely see you all next week during uh, the next episode of Training Tuesday as well. We'll see. Uh, all the best. Take care. Bye-bye.